Here I want to talk about a couple rods that I've been fishing for a while now. I've been testing them out by St. Croix, new in their lineup, their new Victory Swimbait Rod Series. This one is the um, Avenger, which is the extra heavy. We also have the extra, extra heavy, which is the Brutus. And I'm fishing this one with a rat bit. This is a stray rat. And I've been using a low profile Shimano Tranks 301, trigger happy comfort grips. The rod's an eight foot swim bait rod. It is rated from four to eight ounces. It's got a really nice tapered handle here. Fits comfortably underneath your arm when you're out casting all day. Uh, great sensitivity. You see I use braid almost exclusively and it's, I mean, it's absolutely fantastic. It's got enough tip that you can work the bait, but also a ton of backbone for when you slam that hook home. Um, very similar specs on the other rod. The rating on this one is two to five ounces. So a little bit for smaller glide baits. And they have one below this one um, as well. Um, again, nice tapered handle, fits comfortably underneath your arm. And for, for the smaller baits, I like to use a round rail. I find it a lot easier to manipulate the bait, meaning rotate the, you know, the rod in my hand and being able to work the bait with the round reel as opposed to the, uh, the low profile reels. That's my personal preference, but I find it really easy to tie on a top water on this and I can really hold the reel and work the bait that way. Um, again, very sensitive tip, whole ton of backbone, able to do some damage on these things. I really like them. The reel seat's very comfortable on them. Um, everything's made in the United States. It's one of the things St. Croix, you know, um, went out to do is build something that was made entirely in the United States. And I'm fully happy to support that. So one of the ways that I like to work the bait is, you know, I always say adapt to what the fish want. Um, sometimes you just want a straight retrieve with whatever bait you're using. This happens to be a Sly Guy nine inch replica trout um, in my own little colorway that I use strictly for stripers. I have assist corded hooks on there to help increase the hookup to land ratio, get rid of the split rings involved. Um, you know, sometimes you want to cast out and give a straight retrieve. Sometimes it's a nice sauntering, slow, you know, glide back and forth that they want. Other times you have to make it erratic, almost like a big jerk bait. You gotta really gotta hit it hard and twitch it. This goes for bass and stripers too. Uh, I primarily fish for striped bass. However, today is like today. I'm out at Lake Berryessa. I'm gonna do some shore banging. So I'll be targeting bass with it. Um, sometimes you want, you know, the bait nice and slow and just let it suspend and either, you know, use your round reel. Like I hold it like this and twitch the rod and then really let that bait do some jerking and suspending and try and trigger a bite that way. Even if you can't see your bait, you want to do it around cover. Sometimes you'll get that bass that's leery, that's hanging back, sees that bait try and get away, thinks it's its last opportunity to get a meal, it'll trigger it into striking. Um, but again, you got to work the bait how the fish want it. You know, we can talk all day about techniques, but ultimately if you don't adapt to what the fish want, you know, that's that's how you're gonna get bit. Um, same thing with when I'm fishing rats. You know, a lot of times rats are used as night fishing baits and for good reason that they're a really big presence at night, really easy target to see. And I like to fish them very slow. Um, even during the day, like today, I'll fish it pretty slow and I'll just let it pause around cover, you know, five, 10 seconds, whatever, again, adapt to whatever the fish want. Um, Sometimes you'll want to slap it really hard and make that bait walk back and forth like you would a spook. Um, again, it just depends on what the bait wants or what the, the fish want that day. You're going to have to really dial in what the fish want around the cover and what they're eating and what their appetite is. Sometimes you just can't force feed them and that's just the way it goes. But, you know, these are all little tips and tricks on how to get those fish into biting, those leery biters and turn them into biting fish as opposed to just followers. There's nothing more frustrating than having followers you know, follow your bait all the way up to the surface. Um, when I say these, these rods can cast this bait a mile, I mean it. I mean, this is about roughly a six ounce bait on a rod that's rated to eight ounces and it's not underpowered at, at all. Um, similarly, it's not overpowered. I have thrown baits up to eight and a half ounces on this rod, rated to eight ounces, and I'd feel comfortable throwing that bait all day long. I can't say that about a lot of other stuff on the market. 
you know, you, you get in the, everyone talks about the sweet spot of a rod. I feel comfortable throwing just about anything on this, you know, it, I've had days where I've had to tie on a jig and I've used one of these to, to toss the jig around. Not the ideal rod for that, but when conditions permit and that's what you need to do, that's what you need to do. Um, but no, great rods. These are number one in my swim bait arsenal right now. This is what I grab every time I go fish. Both of these are amazing. I'm gonna go do some fishing, see if I can't catch anything. Check back in with you guys later. If anyone has any questions, always feel free to hit me up. I can't say enough good things about St. Croix. The rods are absolutely amazing. Handmade in the US, 100% built in the US, which is huge. Um, you can't say that about a lot of other manufacturers, but truly, truly a great rod. And they really built these things exactly what swim bait anglers have in mind. You know, long enough that you can really bomb those casts out there. Still short enough that it's not too burdensome when you're trying to transport them everywhere or trying to make those, you know, underhand casts or flipping a bait into a tight spot. Um, similarly, have a ton of power in them. I mean, these things can absolutely slam the hook and you don't feel undergunned at all. Even when I'm catching big stripers on them, don't feel undergunned at all. So I think they're great rods. I think you guys will really like them. Highly, highly recommend to check them out, especially for the price point. They can't be beat. Well, I don't know if my video captured it, but I was fishing the rat, slow, steady retrieve, letting it pause, wasn't getting any action. So what I ended up doing is casting it out, letting it sit, twitching it like a spook, like I was talking about earlier. And my first cast doing that got crushed by a big fish. Um, I think it was on video. I didn't land it. It bit the head. I got some teeth marks right up here on the head. I don't know if the camera picks any of those up, but um, yeah, it was cool. It's cool to see, you know, it work when you're able to switch up the retrieve and find out what the fish wants, just like I was talking about. Um, but all of that happened within one cove. I mean, I I stayed in the exact same spot and fan casted, you know, about a, I don't know, 50, 70 times, something like that, um, before I switched up my retrieve. Found that one that was willing to come up and bite. Um, I'd like to think it was the the change that triggered the strike. So I'm going to stick with that cadence for a while. See if I can't produce anything else. Um, I think I'm going to throw the glide in right now where that fish is. He didn't want to come back up and hit the rat again. So I'll throw the glide in. See if he wants to hit something subsurface. But pretty cool to see what I was talking about in action. Um, it, it was an immediate change as soon as it changed as, as I made that switch. It happened. I set the hook as hard as I can, but it just wasn't, nothing was there. So that's swim bait fishing sometimes, swing for the fences, and sometimes there's just nothing on the other end. Whether they get the hooks or they just miss miss the hooks, and in this case, it looks like you bit the head and probably had a mouthful of bill. Um, but that's the way it goes sometimes, so I'm gonna get back out there. Thanks for checking in, checking it out. I'm glad I got that. Um, it wasn't a catch, but that bite on tape after I made up the uh, the retrieve difference, just in switching up a little simple thing, I was able to draw out that strike. So don't be ever too scared to adapt and overcome. Um, hopefully some of these tips helped you out and can make your day more productive on the water. This is Delta Fisher. I'll talk to you guys later.